for uh, clinicians in the community, we know now that we have ASCO-based guidelines to uh, deal with immunotoxicity. Immunotoxicities are typically ones that we're seeing when we treat patients with PD-1 or PD-L1 inhibitors that are now approved for use in the community. And we also are now, now combining uh, different immunotherapies together in the community as well with nivolumab and ipilimumab where the chance of toxicity is even higher than single agent therapies. And so really we need some uh, framework around how to manage manage patients as well. So in these guidelines, particularly the ASCO-based guidelines, tell us how to actually monitor patients while on treatment for these type of uh, toxicities, how to educate patients as well as other providers that you work with in the community, and then also how to manage the side effects. And managing the side effects is based on grade of side effects, so very mild side effects to very severe side effects. And then these guidelines even go down to the detail about doses of steroids that you need to use for depending on the grade of side effect, and then also how to work, work up the side effects. So if a patient comes in with fatigue, what different things should you be looking at to try to see, is it from the immunotherapy or immune-based side effects versus another side effect that may be more based on their disease? I think the, uh, the practical applications of these guidelines are really based on what to follow uh, to begin with. One is what should we be worried about? You know, Typically we're asking patients on a day-to-day -day basis about what side effects are they having, but some things that are more silent and insidious that need to be followed based on uh, laboratory values, such as thyroid function. So patients can have progressive fatigue due to hypothyroidism. So we actually follow patients every four to six weeks. We look at uh, blood-based uh, lab tests, looking at TSH and free T4. Um, and then once or if the TSH goes up above 10, then and that's consistent, we need to think about actually adding in levothyroxine to replace their thyroid hormone that thyroid hormone then, the dose is actually specified in the guidelines and this, these guidelines are, were um, developed in conjunction with endocrinologists and so we feel like these guidelines give a framework about how best to manage patients who develop hypothyroidism. And again, we manage, we follow this by the looking at lab-based parameters. Again, I think the um, toxicities, kind of the basics about managing toxicities is if it's mild, very low grade, you can just continue patients on immunotherapy and uh, follow them closely, um, talking with them on the phone or once they come in, talking with them about side effects. If they're higher grade, so patients now are starting to have symptoms, then you start add, having to stop or hold the immunotherapy and add steroids to it um, to try to manage or take the bring the brakes back on uh, into the immune system. And then if patients are very sym symptomatic, grade three or grade four toxicities, that's when we start talking about stopping immunotherapy and not being able to restart it and really using steroids as a mainstay of treatment. There's a small percentage of patients though, even with all of that, that their toxicities continue to progress. Based on these guidelines, it gives um, parameters when to use drugs like infliximab, uh, or IVIG or even uh, cytoxan to be able to control more out of control uh, inflammation that is, can be caused by immunotherapy. Again, that's not very common. You might see one or two of these patients, but that's the nice thing about these type of guidelines, particularly for myocarditis um, uh, side effects that you wouldn't see very often. Same with neurologic uh, toxicity side effects from immunotherapy, where again, those occurrences are not very common, it's almost rare, but at least gives you a framework and a place to go so you can get the really basics and nitty gritty about how to manage these patients.